Nearsighted. What's going on, Sequoia Nation? This is Dr. Schilling bringing you today's wellness wisdom. Today we're talking about nearsighted. Yesterday we talked about farsighted. So if you didn't pick up that video, check back on that one if you want to understand why people can see far but not close. In this case, it's they can see close but not far. Oftentimes this is related to uh, children during, uh, they develop this conflict that then gets triggered later in life as it pertains to being close to the mother breast and close to their mother and feeling comfort there and feeling safe and stuff like that. So when a child, even if it's inadvertently, maybe it, it has to be probably multiple exposures, but if the mother expresses any, I don't know, displeasure, discontentment, um, not being happy about having to breastfeed or a, maybe a constant irritation state while she's breastfeeding and that child, I mean, looking up at the mother, they, they develop a sense of, I need to keep a close eye and therefore they can see very close. So they're, they're really focused on that, that it's called the myopia, the, the myopic, the very close relationship with the mother. Um, and so they're picking up on that because babies, they sense everything, right? Um, when you think about myopia or nearsightedness, it's related to fearing stress of something that is uh, like as, as a, an event comes closer, like as it comes into your visual field, that's when the stress increases, okay? And therefore, like people pay attention more to things that are right here like for example, yesterday we talked about the long-term like distance horizontal stuff. This is like stuff that's like in your face right now. And as a result, um, they can be apprehensive toward these things. They can be very stressed by uh, near-term things that anxiety might increase and things like that. Uh, in addition to their, their vision being blurred in the distance, like they could see like from here to the camera, but they can't see, you know, the, the, the wall behind it, whatever it might be. <clears throat> and so, Sometimes it can be related to like they had a, a near miss, like they had a really close encounter with, with um, something that was dangerous or they had um, um, like the danger was seen, like they had, it was like a close encounter, like not like with aliens, like of the third kind, but a close encounter of a tragedy that almost happened but didn't. So they had a close up look at it, like, ah, they, they witnessed an accident or they were in a car accident and walked away but saw the wreck and stuff like that. Um, so that can drive the brain to change. So yesterday we talked about hyperopia with the farsightedness is the, it's like a squishing of the eye, whereas this is a, more of a stretching of the eye. So it changes uh, how the, the light refracts through the eye and things of that nature. Um, there was talk of like an adult or a child who doesn't want to grow up. It's like they won't look past their nose, if you will. They don't want to look past where their current state is and they don't want to grow past that or mature past that. So you might know someone who is nearsighted that may d exhibit a um, behavior related to childlike, if you will, that they don't want to grow up or they seem like they're irresponsible or uh, childish, if you will, and that can be a challenge. Um, when someone has a myopic view or they have that really close, like they can see close, but they can't see far away, that's like it forces a closer connection with, let's say, the mother or some other nurturing figure and as a result, it can be a compensation for having not felt safe when there was a distance between the two. So if you think about it that way, you're talking about really focusing on things that are of immediate urgency, of immediate importance. And that's why it's critical for the, the brain to shift the eye <clears throat> and then focus on what they can see from here to here and not things out in the future or in the, the distance, if you will. Um, last but not least, there's, there was discussion in the, in the literature about um, the belief that no outsiders are needed, right? We don't need anything outside of our family. Uh, so someone might, like, I don't need anything outside of my partner. I have, I have everything I need. Um, outsiders are not welcome, things like that. Uh, so that, that was just a, a tidbit related to that. But if, if you think about it, everything is about focusing on what's close and what's necessary for survival, that protection and things like that. So those are the things you want to focus on with someone who has nearsightedness or it's the, the myopia, the myopic vision where it's very close and, and limited. And so compare and contrast that with your farsighted friends. If you are having trouble understanding why, what their personality types are like, now you kind of understand what a person that is dealing with nearsightedness is dealing with, okay? So comment down below if you liked it, if you felt like it was beneficial to help someone understand like, oh man, this is my aunt Sue or my, my cousin Bill or whatever it is. You know, my brother, my dad, my mom, whoever it is, like share it with them so they can understand like some of the stresses that affect them because if you enlighten them to one of these things, they could change their entire life. Like, oh my gosh, like that, I see that every day or 
I've always felt, you know, this anxiety if I was separated from so and so for for too much time, whatever it might be. So dig in, get an understanding of what's going on, and a better understanding of how it affects you or the people you love, and then uh, share it with the world so they can understand you better. Because if you feel understood in the world, life is just generally better. Okay, guys. All right, love you. Appreciate you. Comment below. Share with us what you want us to to discuss and study for you. Bring you that topic, and we'll continue to bring you the brain body connection of all the different conditions you've been labeled with, so you are empowered to, to ditch the diagnosis and, and move on with life, all right? Good luck.